welcome back welcome back this is unit 19 or unit 18 depending on which spec you're using but once it's called internet of things it's going to be exactly the same criteria same assignment brief all should be well so before i make a start the first thing i think everyone should do because people doing this course doing this unit are probably people going off the university the degree apprenticeships just going off to do some further education thing one of the things you guys need to start learning how to do, if you haven't done so already, is learning how to lay out your report in a logical way that's very easy to follow, very easy to read. And I don't just mean putting all the text in the right place. I mean having headings where necessary. So you guys are going to hear the term or the phrase styles and formatting quite a bit moving forward. Styles and formatting simply means having headings and subheadings where necessary. For example, this here is going to be the title of my document. So on Microsoft Word, when I highlight all of this, this works on Word Online, Word Offline, which is what I'm using here. And it also works ex more or less the same on Google Drive as well, called Google Docs. When you highlight this text here, because I want to make this the title of my document, I'm going to go to the home page in Microsoft Word. So you have File, Home, Insert, Draw. I'm going to go to Home, top left-hand corner. I'm also going to click on this arrow down here that gives me a drop-down list of everything. And these are the styles and formatting things that you should ideally use to have your document laid out the way you want. Because I want this to be title, I simply click on the one that says title and that's it. Done. This is going to make this the title of your thing. The next thing you want to do is whatever comes next should be heading one. So for me, I'm going to say assignment A, examine, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to label this heading one. So if I type this normally, let me type it properly, actually, or just copy and paste it. So assignment A, whatever it's called, I type something and I want to make it a heading one. Again, I type it, I highlight it. I go back to home again. I go over to this section here that has normal, no spacing, heading one, heading two, heading three. Click on heading one and that makes it a heading one. That's it. Now, as you can see, the left hand side of my screen has every single thing I have on here. This is the benefit of doing this. So to, to view this pane, to view this section over here, you're going to go to view on the tab at the top. You're going to go to navigation pane. Where is it here? View and go to navigation pane. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to turn it back on now. And as you can see, everything is over here. One of the benefits of doing this, let me get rid of this section here. One of the benefits of doing this is so that whenever you come to do your table of contents, you can do it in two or three clicks. That's number one. Another benefit is that as an examiner, you're looking for something specific. I don't really want to read your research because the research is 99% more or less going to be correct because you went to a website, you read it, you understood it, you wrote it in your own words and you've referenced it. That's not really what I want to see. I want to see the technical stuff that is going to be different for every single student. So I might skip through P1 and P2, for example, and I might just want to see M1. And I might just come on here and rather than me scrolling, 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 I have a hundred pages to scroll through. I might click on M1 and it takes me straight there. But that can only be done if you have styles and formatting sorted out. So another benefit of this, let me scroll all the way back up. This is my front page here where I have all my assignment stuff, my notes. I'm going to go through this in the next video. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood styles and formatting properly. So this is my first page here first page should have normally your name and name of your assignment the teacher the unit blah 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 all of that stuff i'm gonna create a page break so or a new page you can keep pressing enter or again for people who like the shortcuts like myself you press and hold control on your keyboard and then you press enter it creates a new page because i've done my headings and my styles and formatting stuff correctly if i go to i believe it's references i'm going to do table of contents on the left here and then I'm just going to choose the one I like on Google Classroom or Google Drive online, Google Docs. Go to insert, you choose table of contents and the same option will come up. So for me, uh, let's just do that one there. Right. And now look at this. Everything is how I would want it. This one is a bit long, but that's fine. The benefit of this, again, is that your table of contents. Imagine I had 30, 40, 50, 60 pages of work here. I don't need to go back and manually figure out what page stuff is on. Once I have my headings on formatted stuff sorted out, I go to, uh, what did I go? References, table of contents, and this will automatically update. So let me go to D1, for example. Let's just create a new thing. Let's call this D2. Let's make that heading one as well. Let's do another one, call it D10. I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, right? D10. 
if I go back to my my table of contents here, as you can notice, D2 and D10 are not here yet. So for me to put it there, all I need to do is to click on this table anywhere, click on it. It comes up with the option here that says update table. Once I do that and I click yes. Oh, no, I need to click on uh, update entire table. Sorry. So we have two options here, update page numbers only or update entire table. Click OK and boom my page number, my headings, everything will pop up here. So you never, ever, ever have to go back and manually figure out, oh, what page is that section on? Okay, it's page six. Uh, which one is that one on? Okay, that's page seven. Oh, that's page. You never have to do that. Once you have your styles and formatting done properly, you can have this done in no time. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys before I continue, let's get rid of this quickly. Don't need this stuff here is references. You need to have a references page. And references typically is the very last thing on your document. So again, I'm going to press enter twice. I'm going to press and hold control on my keyboard and press enter. And I'm going to just type the word references, R-E-F-E-R-E-N-C-E-S. I'm going to make this a heading one again. So I click on it or I highlight it. I go to home and I go to heading one and that's it. I'm done. Now, under references, there are a couple ways that we can reference. For us IT stroke engineering people, the style of referencing that we should use is called IEEE. I -E -E -E. For BTEC level three, I don't think you need to concern yourselves with that too much. I think if you just grab the name of uh, article, right? Name of article, you have maybe, I, I like to do date and I also like to do link. Right. If you do something like this, you should be fine. So let me give you a quick example. Can I show this stuff here? Yeah, perfect. This is the Raspberry Pi Pico. It has the Pico and the Pico W information here. This is the, the microcontroller I'm going to be using for this unit. I'm going to copy the link at the very top. Right. I'm going to go back to my Word document. And in here, name of article, it was Raspberry Pi Pico. Yeah, that's it. So the name of the article, Raspberry Pi. Pi Pico. The date today is the 3rd of June 2023. And the link, I simply paste the link there like so. Couple ways we can do the link. I like this method if the link is a short link, if it's not a really long link. However, let's say I went to this website and I think if I click on Raspberry Pi Pico W datasheet, okay, that's not too long to be fair. Let's just copy that one anyway. If this was a really, really long link, it wouldn't look very neat. So another way that we can do the link, we can say link to information. Oh, spell it wrong. Now it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but this is what I like to see in my documents. This is what I personally do in for, did I spell it wrong? Yep. I'm going to highlight this. I've already have my link copied. I'm going to right click on this and I can do link from here. And once I do link this, window will pop up and once you click an address you don't even have to click i think it, your cursor automatically goes there you do control and v to paste or you could just right click and choose paste and it will just go there as well yep you click ok and that entire link it doesn't matter how long the link is is now compressed into that thing there so this is how i like to do mine you can have your link like this let me zoom in which is nice and neat if you have a very short link like I do here. If you have a very long link, let's say I went to Google and I did some random search, right? This is a very long link. If I went back to my document and I pasted that link, that's how it would look. Not very neat, but it's okay, but it's not very nice to see. Or I can simply have it like this where all the user has to do is click on this link and it will take them exactly to the same website, the same information, same everything. When you export this as a PDF, they don't have to press control and click on it. They can just click on it straight away. So these are just a few admin -y things that I think people should know when doing reports in general. Probably the last one should be the text that you have. Um, you decide how you want it to be. At university, at degree apprenticeships, they're most likely going to tell you the font it needs to be in. It's normally Arial. Calibri and Times New Roman. They don't really give you much wiggle room there. The size should normally be between 10, 11 or 12. I like to choose 11. That's a nice middle ground. 
um, they won't normally say the justification. So this is left justified at the moment, because as you can see, everything lines up on the left. If I make it right justified, again, I'm on the home page of Microsoft Word. I click uh, right justified is that one or align right, sorry. Click on that, it lines up to the right. People normally only do this for addresses at the very top of um, letters. They don't normally use it in typical documents. You could do center as well, not very nice in my opinion, or the one I prefer is called justify. So this just makes everything line up on both ends. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Your university lecturers, when they issue assignments, they will specify what needs to be done. So you don't actually get to choose too much. I like justify. And the way you can make sure that everything you type moving forward has this same setting, black text, uh, text is justified on both sides, size is 11. At the top where you have home again, you're going to have your normal text because this is the average of the normal text that we type. You can right click on it. And what you can do is click on update normal to match selection. All that means is that because you've highlighted that section, you fixed that section is perfect as the way you want it. Once you click update normal to match, to match selection, every text in the document that is of the same type, which is normal text, is going to be updated. The heading one stuff, the heading two stuff, the heading three stuff is not ever going to be touched. So I would probably just do update and see everything else that I've typed later on is also fixed. Last part, I promise. I know this is a bit long winded, but this is going to be the last section. We've spoken about heading one. We've spoken about title at the very top. We need to speak about subheadings as well. So heading one is the is the topmost hierarchy of headings, right? It's the top dog. But under that, as you can see on my left hand side of my screen, the navigation pane, I have different sections that actually indent on the heading one. These are just heading two. So let's say my thing is assignment A, examine da 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 da, and I want to speak about the scenario. I copy the scenario from the assignment brief. I would label this heading two because it still comes under this section. So to make it heading two, I type the word scenario. So let's do that again. S C E N A R I O. Type the word scenario. I can just click on it or I can highlight the text. And then once I click on again home page or home in Microsoft Word, and I go to where it says heading two, I click on this, it updates this text here looks different and also the navigation pane has an extra thing so let's call this scenario let's call this uh, part a i have heading one which is that top one there i have heading two which is the subheading of the top one what if i need to have a subheading of heading two then if you've guessed it already it would just be heading three so part a i can just highlight that and i can call it heading three so i go to my home again make sure you're always at home for this you go to home and you do heading three. And again, that gives an indent. So he heading one is at the very top, heading two underneath, heading three underneath that. I can say uh, part A1, I guess, and that can be heading four, just the same. Highlight it or click on it. Click on the arrow next to the style section. And there should be a heading four thing. Here we go, heading four. And there we go. So we have main heading, which is heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four. Now this is how most professional documents are laid out. This is how when people write books, they have chapters and you can just have a table of contents be generated. It's very, very nice to use, very simple. Hopefully that was useful and please make use of this moving forward. It makes your lecturer's life a lot easier. It makes your life a lot easier as well. Imagine you had a hundred pages. I've had assignments given to me, which are 30, 40 pages before. And I have to scroll through the entire thing or I have to press control F to find what I want. Or I could just jump over to the navigation pane on the left, click on the section I want, and I'm just there within a second. All right. So use it.